Hello, in this lesson we're going to look at a data analysis technique which involves using a graph and the equation y equals mx plus c. I hope you've met the equation y equals mx plus c before. Let me just go through a few key points. First of all, the equation itself could be written in a slightly different format. For example, y is c plus xm and you need to be able to recognize the equation even if it's in a different format. The important point about the equation is there are two variables in it, x and y. These are, these are the quantities that can change. And there are two constants, m and c. These are fixed values. Look at this equation as an example. y is 0.5x plus 5. x and y can change values. If I give you a value of x, you can calculate y, vice versa. The fixed values are the 0.5 that corresponds to m, the thing multiplying the x, and the 5. 5 corresponds to c, the number added to the end. Another example underneath, y is 9 minus 5x. I hope you can see that 9 corresponds to c, the value of c is 9, and the value of m is minus 5. If we were to measure y and x, or have some values, and drew a graph y axis x axis we'd get a straight line and the graph has a couple of important properties first of all it intercepts a y axis somewhere the value is 5 here the value of the y intercept is actually the value c so if you look at the equation 0.5x plus c you can tell immediately that the graph intercepts the y-axis when y is 5. The other point about the graph is its gradient. To work the gradient out, which is the steepness, we'd construct a right angle triangle like this. The gradient is rise divided by run. I've marked that delta y, delta x. Delta y over delta x is a gradient. The gradient corresponds to m m is 0.5, the gradient of that graph will be 0.5. On the lower graph, the intercept will be 9, crosses the y-axis when y equals 9, and the gradient will be minus 5. It's a downhill negative gradient, and if we worked it out, rise over run, we'd get minus 5. Because these graphs are straight lines, we say that x and y have a linear relationship. You could also say y is linearly dependent on x. One special case is when c is 0. In that case, the equation simply becomes y equals mx. We call this relationship a, a proportional relationship. We say y is proportional to x. If we drew the graph, we'd get a straight line through the origin. An example of such relationship is y is 2.1x. y is a fixed number times x. And the fixed number is sometimes called the constant of proportionality. And it corresponds to the gradient value. Let's do an actual example. Suppose we've got two quantities which are related. Let's take the length of a spring and the tension, that's the stretching force. Well, I hope it's obvious that the bigger the tension gets, the longer the spring gets. L and T could be related by a formula like this. L is a number, call it A, times T, plus another number. If you think about it, B is the unstretched length of the spring. If T were equal to 0, L would simply be equal to B. So this is a physical meaning, the unstretched length. A, the number we're multiplying t by, A tells us something about the spring, how stiff it is. Is it easy to stretch? Is it hard to stretch? The value will relate to that. If you look at the equation, you'll see it's actually y equals mx plus c. Just use different letters. Look underneath, y corresponds to the variable l. x corresponds to the variable t m corresponds to the constant a and c corresponds to the constant b 
So this equation is really y equals mx plus c in disguise. If I measured length and tension for different stretches, I could plot a graph, L against E. I'd get a straight line. The intercept value would be B. We know that because that's what the intercept means. The C value is the intercept. The gradient of the line would give us the value of A. The gradient would be the change in L over the change in tension, delta L divided by delta t. So from a set of results of length and tension we could work out the value of a and b. This leads us to a general technique. The problem is this. If x and y are two related quantities that can be measured and they were length and tension in the previous example, we believe x and y are related by this formula. Sometimes we'll believe that, not always. It may not be always an appropriate relationship, but we believe there's a linear relationship between x and y. If that's true, how do we find the values of m and c by measuring x and y? The solution is this. We measure values of x and y. We plot the graph y against x. x. We construct the best fit straight line. If it's not a straight line, we might get a curve. It means that that relationship isn't applicable, it's a non-linear relationship. But if we get a straight line, we can then measure the gradient of the best fit straight line, and the gradient gives us our value m. We then measure the y-intercept, and this gives us our value c. That's the technique. Let's use it. Here's a more realistic example. V is the voltage across a cell in the circuit, and I is the current through it. There are two variables, voltage and current. They can change depending on the resistance of the rest of the circuit. EMF is the, sorry, E. This curly E is the symbol for EMF, electromotive force. E is the EMF of the cell, and small letter R is the cell's internal resistance. They're fixed amounts, they're constants. Now, if you haven't met electrical circuits and internal resistance before, just don't worry, just treat this as a mathematical relationship because they are related by this equation. The voltage across the cell is the EMF minus the current times resistance. I hope you can recognize this is a y equals mx plus c type formula. We'll see why in a moment. Now we can measure V and I. How can we use the values to find EMF and R? That's the question. For those who are familiar with electrical circuits, let me just note that the circuit we'd use would be this. We'd have a voltmeter measure V, we'd have an ammeter to measure the current, and a variable resistor so that we could measure voltage, measure current, change the variable resistor, and get a new voltage and current, change the variable resistor, and repeat that process, get a set of values of V and I. They would look something like this, perhaps. Voltage values and the corresponding current values. We plot that on the graph. I'm going to put V on the y-axis and I on the x-axis. If you're used to electrical circuit work, you may say, well, we normally put V on the x-axis. I've done it this way around to make the working a bit simpler. I'll show you what happens at the end of the lesson if we put V on the x-axis. For the moment, though, V goes on the y-axis, I goes on the x-axis. We've plotted our best fit line and We've got the intercept values here, 2.5 there. I've also got the intercept at the bottom, 7.8. Now, go back to the equation we're looking at. V is EMF minus IR. Just rearrange that slightly. V is E minus RI. I hope you see now this is Y is C plus MX. Y corresponds to the variable V. X corresponds to the variable I. C corresponds to the constant E, and M corresponds to the constant minus R. Summarize that underneath. Y corresponds to V, X to I, C to E, M to minus R, or we could say minus R corresponds to M. It's the same thing. Now we can use our knowledge to work out values of the EMF E and the internal resistance R. First of all, we know that the intercept on the v-axis 
is going to be our value of EMF. Do you remember EMF corresponds to C? That's the y-axis intercept. Well, we've got a v-axis here. Immediately we can say the EMF is the intercept. It's 2.5 naught volts. Let's work out the gradient of the graph. You'll note it's negative. It, voltage goes down as the current increases. So the gradient is minus 2.5 over 7.8. M is minus 2.5 over 7.8. That's minus 0.321 ohms. Notice I've put a unit for the gradient. I've divided volts by amps to work out that gradient. And in physics, at least, we say gradients can have units. So we've got the gradient value, but we know that m corresponds to minus r, or minus r corresponds to m. So the, the internal resistance, little r, is simply minus m, minus the gradient. Minus minus 0.321 is simply plus 0.321 ohms. So we've used the gradient to find our value of internal resistance, little r. I mentioned that we often put voltage on the x-axis when we're doing electrical work. If we did that, it would be a much messier problem because I'd have to arrange the equation into a form which says i equals something. The first variable would be i. If I do that, it's clumsier. I get i is emf over r minus v over r. Still use the technique. y corresponds to i, x corresponds to v, but now the constant C corresponds to EMF divided by R and the gradient M corresponds to minus 1 over R. It's a bit clumsy. We can work through the answer, get the same thing, but it was easier if we put V on the y-axis. If you want to pause and check that for yourself if you're interested, you are welcome to. Well, that's it. That was an introduction to the technique. It can be used in a variety of ways, but that's the basic method.